Curacao Baseball and the Kingdom of the Netherlands are splitting up. Why are they doing this? How does each team look after the breakup? And what does the future hold for an independent Curacao and a Netherlands team without its greatest source of talent? This is not new news I'm delivering here. They more or less announced it at the end of the last WBC a year ago, and that was after years of speculation. It was sure to happen and we weren't surprised by it. But it didn't really sink in till recently when the topic of the WBC qualifiers came up, and we had to mention a Curacao team trying to qualify for the WBC. Then came the Caribbean series a couple weeks ago with a Curacao team made up of a lot of the same players from last year's WBC team. And suddenly it feels like the age of an independent Curacao national team has begun. Why? That's the first question. After all, dividing any team into two separate parts means that each resulting team now has a smaller pool of players to choose from than they did when they were all together as one country. And the United Netherlands team has twice reached the semifinals of the WBC, one of the best baseball playing countries in the world, a team that everyone felt could one day make a run for the title. I haven't heard any exact reason for Curacao wanting to go independent, but I'd imagine it has something to do with them getting the recognition they deserve for supplying most of the talent that has made the Netherlands baseball team so successful. While the Netherlands has really made a name for itself in the baseball world, most people can't find Curacao on a map. Outside of baseball fans, a lot, perhaps most people, have never heard of Curacao, but they're the ones doing all the work. Not many places out there as small as Curacao putting out so much professional talent. They deserve to be recognized for their greatest athletic achievement. Curacao was a Dutch territory up until 2010. Its status changed to a country within the Kingdom of the Netherlands. Even as a territory, it would have had the right to compete on its own, as Puerto Rico does. And now with a more independent status, the only reason to remain with the Dutch team is if they feel like they can't compete on their own. But they know they can. In the same way, I don't think anyone in Puerto Rico is hoping to join the U.S. team. They might have a better chance of winning the WBC together with the U.S. team, but they know they can win it on their own, and any country, territory, or whatever in that situation would prefer to compete on their own. When the idea was first thrown out there, I thought they were going to have a Dutch Caribbean team, made up of players from Curacao, Aruba, and St. Martin, similar to the British West Indies cricket team, made up of all the small Caribbean islands that are part of the British Commonwealth. They're too small to compete independently, but when you put them all together, they make for a competitive team. That could still happen one day with the Dutch Caribbean Islands in baseball someday. But it appears that this is going to be a Curacao going solo. One island, one team. Aruba and St. Martin remain with the Netherlands team. What will the roster of an independent Curacao team look like? Well, if we start with the hitters, it looks almost exactly like last year's Netherlands team. Jerkson Profar, Roger Bernadina, Vladimir Ballantine, Ozzy Albies, Didi Gregorius, Andrelton Simmons, Jonathan Scope, also Charlin Scope, and Jeremy Profar. Catcher Dashenko Ricardo. They would be missing shortstop Alexander Bogarts and catcher Chadwick Trump. Those two come from Aruba. So the hitting would be missing a couple pieces, but it's almost exactly what the Dutch team brought to the WBC last year. For pitching, they'd still have Jair Jurgens, Sharon Martiz, JC Silberen, and a few relievers. Most important in the bullpen, Kenley Jansen is from Curacao. Not too bad. But they would be missing several pieces from last year's WBC pitching staff. Starting pitchers Tom DeBlock and Lars Hoyer come from the Netherlands. A few pitchers from Aruba. One pitcher, Franklin Van Gerp, comes from St. Martin. The pitching staff would be roughly split down the middle, about half going to the Curacao team, the other half to the Netherlands team. Netherlands allowed 23 runs in the four games of pool play at last year's WBC. Not a whole lot, but it was apparent that they didn't have an unlimited supply of dominant arms, and their two wins were both by two runs. Any loss of pitching could be really damaging to a team like that. I'm sure Curacao can find some good pitchers from the Major League system, or from the Dutch League, to fill out their roster, but the pitching staff most certainly would come up short compared with what the Netherlands team brought last year. That being said, the hitting is good enough. They could win some slugfests or just use the right combination of pitchers. The Netherlands team has never been known for having dominant forces on the mound, but they've always gotten the job done. That could carry over onto a new Curacao team as well. Alright, now what will the Netherlands team look like after the split? For hitters, they've got Alexander Bogarts, catchers Chadwick Trump and Sicknarf Loopstock, and Ray Patrick Ditter, who can play infield and outfield. That's it, and all four of them come from Aruba. So if Aruba decided to go independent or join Curacao to form a Dutch Caribbean team, the Netherlands would have to completely rebuild their lineup. Pitching would be alright, they still have DeBlock, Hoyer, and some good relievers. You may wonder if any of these players have split loyalties. The only possibility there is Didi Gregorius. He was born in the Netherlands but moved to Curacao when he was five. I'm pretty sure he would side with Curacao. 
Players not from either one, relief pitcher Derek West is American of Dutch descent. He would go with the Netherlands team. Richie Palacios, Xander Wheel, and Pedro Strope all have family connections with Curacao, and that's where they'd play. Both teams could likely find more family connections to fill out their rosters. The Dutch team will be looking especially hard for any hitters with a close Dutch relative, something they didn't really have to worry about when they had a lineup full of Curacao-born hitters. How will these teams do in the WBC and WBC qualifiers? The Netherlands is already qualified for the WBC, so they don't have to worry about qualifying. Curacao must finish in the top two at next year's WBC qualifier. As I mentioned in a video on that topic a few weeks ago, they will likely be in a qualifier with Colombia, Brazil, maybe Nicaragua, and a few other teams. They can do it, but it's not an easy task. In a group like that, I'd put their chances of qualifying at about 50-50. If they don't qualify, they would all be eligible to compete for Team Netherlands, and we could once again see a United Dutch team in the WBC. So you know Team Netherlands supporters will be hoping for Curacao to take an exit in the qualifiers. Then they can have all those Curacao players back in their lineup. A Netherlands team with all the best players from Curacao has a really good chance of advancing beyond pool play in the WBC, a pretty good chance of reaching the semis, and an outside shot of winning it all. But what about a Netherlands team without any players from Curacao? They'd have some of the pitchers from their last WBC team, a couple major league hitters, and a few other position players would be returning. They'd have to fill up the rest of the lineup with hitters from the Dutch league, assuming they can't find any other hitters from the major league system with close enough Dutch ancestry to qualify for participation. If that kind of Netherlands team was put in the same pool as last time, with Taiwan, Panama, Italy, and Cuba, they could pull off a win or two like they did last time. But I would bet on them finishing last, based on the talent they would be bringing, the best native-born pitchers from the Dutch league, and a lineup built around two major league hitters, filled out with all new hitters not on any previous Netherlands team. You'd have to rate them below the other four teams in their pool. It would be even worse for them if Aruba and St. Martin joined Curacao to form a Dutch Caribbean team. Like I said before, all position players on last year's Netherlands team came from the Caribbean. They would have absolutely nothing to build on from last time if that were the case. What does this mean for the future of Netherlands baseball? It's not only the WBC, but all international tournaments. If Netherlands is playing in, say, the European Championship, a tournament they usually win, without any players from Curacao, they'll lose a big advantage they currently have but they would still be one of the strongest, if not the strongest, countries in Europe. In the WBC, they'd fall behind Italy due to the large presence of Americans on the Italian team. But when it comes to domestic talent, Netherlands still arguably has the best on the continent. The Dutch league will still get the best players from the Dutch Caribbean who are not part of the major league system. Curaçao is still part of the Kingdom of the Netherlands. It'll be the easiest place for them to go. Local Dutch players will still compete with and against players from Curaçao and other Dutch Caribbean islands week after week throughout the summer. So I wouldn't worry about the future of Dutch baseball. They've got a good system in place. They'll still be competitive, still one of the best in Europe. I think, as far as the European Championship, they'll still be using players from Curaçao anyway. I think the only time they won't be able to use players from Curaçao is when the Curaçao team is competing in the same tournament. So some things aren't going to change anyway. But concerning the WBC, it's going to be a lot harder for a Netherlands team to match what they did in the past. The new standard of success might not be whether or not they reach the quarterfinals, but whether or not they can avoid relegation, and it will be a lot harder for them to remain a Premier 12 team. And what about Curacao? Any concern about whether they'll be competitive? Right now, no. Look at the players they have to start with. Profar, Gregorius, Scope, Simmons, Ballantin, Bernadina, Martiz, Jurgens, Jansen. Some concerns about depth, especially with pitching, but that's a lot to build a team on, more than most countries start with. The biggest concern I would have with an independent Curacao team is their age. I know I've said this a lot. I said it when I did a team preview last year before the WBC, but they did just fine. I said it a couple weeks ago previewing Curacao's team for the Caribbean series. They finished fourth. Those older players keep producing in international tournaments. But Ballantine and Bernadina are 39. Jurgens and Strope are 38. Simmons, Gregorius, Martiz all in their mid-30s. Age eventually has to catch up to them. Maybe some young players will rise up to take their places. Curacao has been consistently producing talent for the Major League system for quite some time now. But on an island of just 150,000 people, you have to wonder how long they can keep it up. And for anyone wondering if we could see an independent Aruba team someday. If they did so right now, they would start out with a few pitchers and a few position players from last year's Netherlands WBC team, including Bogarts and Chadwick Trump. 
That's a good group to start out with, but they would have a hard time filling out a roster. There are just over 100,000 people on Aruba, and from what Bogarts himself has said in the past, soccer is the number one sport there. Baseball is second. Going independent is not a good option for Aruba. Anyway, that's all for this one. Until next time, this is Baseball International. See ya.